Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Can you guys hear me? Maybe. I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. How's everything going? Is, is everything okay? Yeah, Good. so far I can't complain. What? So far I can't complain, everything's fine. <laughs> okay, so this morning I wanted to do a few things. Um, the first one is going over the syllabus and going over like the different assignments that you guys um, are going to complete. Um, feel free to like interrupt me if you have if you guys have any questions like i know i have an accent so if there's something you do not understand just let me know sounds good yeah okay so this is actually really awkward <laughs> i'm so used to pitch like on campus and see you guys like sitting in front of me and like interacting with you guys now it's just like weird so hopefully this works. Um, so let's go over, let me find this first, go over the syllabus. Um, and I'm not really going over everything on the syllabus because that's just um, sort of like a waste of time, like you guys can read over the syllabus, but I wanna go over some of the main items there so you guys have an idea of how the class is going to be structured. Okay, so can you guys see the syllabus? Yeah, I can see it. Perfect. Okay, so in this class, um, I will be working with Dave Wilson. So I'll be doing about like 90% of the class and he's just gonna be around helping a little. He's gonna help with the labs and help with the discussion forums. So you will see him like popping in and out um, at some point. So if you guys have any questions, you can contact me or you can contact him. So on the good side, this gives you two different options. So like if you hate the way I explain things, then you got Dave to ask questions about. So if you like the way I explain things, then great. <laughs> so there's different options. And something really important about chemistry is you're always gonna have questions and there's always a way that makes sense, that clicks for you. And having two resources makes a lot of sense because then like I might say something that doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but then maybe Dave will or like vice versa, maybe you ask Dave something and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Then you ask me and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Cause you just need to be able to like connect that to something that actually you understand. So that's how sort of how chemistry works. So here is my information. So you got my uh, Google voice number. So if you need to like get a hold of me, you can email me that goes to my phone. So I'll get it right away. But you can also text me. And texting works really well if you want, if you're working on a problem and you want some feedback right away, you can text me and send a, send a photo and that makes it a lot easier than you like texting me and be like, hey man, you have a question about problem seven. Because like if I'm not at home, I have no clue what problem seven is. But if you take a photo, then you're like, hey, I have a problem solving this question. And then that actually makes it a lot easier. So anyways, uh, so here's the information for the class. Um, I'm open to like meet like on teams, like individually. So if you want to work on problems and what's not, and you want to just like meet through to Zoom or through teams, we can just work on problems that way also. Just email me and we can schedule something. So this is my office hours, but I have other open times also. So you can just email me if you, these times do not work for you. Um, so have like a sort of like breakdown on how I want the classes to be. Today we are not gonna follow this. 
because it's just like an introductory time. But for the most part, this is sort of how classes are going to be structured. Um, I'm going to, we always have to put a lot of stuff on the syllabus so you can see how like 10 pages of syllabus. So that's why I'm not going through the syllabus today. <laughs> so I'm going to skip all of this and just, just go to some of the most important things, which are like point distribution. At the end of the day, we all want to grade, we want to do well. So how do we get points? So the first week, uh, this week, we have a bunch of different like introductory activities. So yeah, all these ones, they're about 10 points total. Uh, um, I want you guys to like get to know each other and like know how everybody looks like and how everybody talks. So there's a lot of like random activities, like you're gonna make an introductory post and you're gonna make a short video. For the most part, like I give you some guides on like what each one has to have, but honestly, I don't really care. I just want you guys to interact with each other. Does that make sense? So to go through all these assignments, um, basically what I would recommend you to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that later. You just go to Cobra, there's something called module zero. Module zero. So you just go through module zero and you'll basically hit everything here. So that's just 10 points. Um, in general, this class, we have 10 different modules. So throughout the whole semester, we're gonna cover 10 different topics. Um, two of them are actually CAM 101 review. So like the first module, module one, is gonna be a review of a bunch of different things you guys need to remember from chemistry 101. So for the most part, eight out of the 10 modules are one chapter, one new chapter. There's only two of them where they're actually a bunch of chapters which are reviews from Chem 101. So no, you will never have to like learn more than one chapter from scratch in this, in this semester. Um, so each chapter or each module will have three different like ways to get points. Um, the first one is to attendance to class. So you come to class, I'm gonna have some poll questions and you guys are gonna answer them and that's the way for me to keep up with who's coming and who's not coming. Um, that's very simple. It's not really about getting them right or anything. It's just by just participating. And the second thing you're going to do, and actually these two things, um, discussions and homework are sort of similar. So what are discussions? Let me stop sharing for a second. Um, So now we are to a different screen. So we are on the cover screen. So if you go to content, um, you click on module zero. So content down there, go to module zero. You got all the different assignments you're going to be doing for the intro week. They're all basically websites and they, this looks really scary. Like just, oh my God, I had to do all of this. Some of these things are just like, Read what it says. Um, let's actually fix this. I'm missing a Y. <laughs> but this way I can show you like how, what they actually entail. Beautiful. My camera is on my way, so I can't see. So most of the assignments this week are basically something like this. Like it tells you, now I'm missing an e. Um, It tells you what the assignments actually entails each week. And then you just have some sort of activity to like have fun, just to get to know each other. 
So don't be scared about all the different activities. They are just like really short ones. Some of them have absolutely nothing. Um, like textbook reading. So every week you have to read a chapter. So this one tells you every week you'll read a chapter. <laughs> this is the book. And that's what you need to do is download the PDF so you have the book with you. Does that make sense? So even though it looks like a bunch of different assignments, they're really not. It's just a bunch of activities so you understand how each class or each, uh, each module is structured because they're all the same. Like I try to make sure that everything is really similar so you get, don't get confused of what to do each week. Like if everything is the same, you get into a routine of when you need to do things. So each week you get like three different sections. So you get lecture, assessment, and laboratory. So let's move to like um, module one because this will actually make more sense. So for lecture, um, you got some study guides. Study guides are basically the objectives or the things you need to know for each module. So there's no points associated to this. Um, so you download them. They're normally between like six to 10 objectives. My computer is being slow, so sorry. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit terrible because this, this is the Chem 101 review. So it's all the things that you, should, you guys should start reviewing from Chemistry 101. For the most part, there's a bunch of things that you guys should know. I'm hoping that by the time you hit Chemistry 142, you know how to balance chemical reactions and do stoichiometry. Does that make sense? So for the most part, these things are like things you guys should know. Um, I'm gonna jump to module two to make it less scary. You're like in between five and 10, it's like 25. <laughs> um, this is a new chapter. So acid and basis will be a brand new chapter for you guys. Um, so when we look at the objectives, hopefully <laughs> less than 10, yay. <laughs> so seven, so they're normally like this, like every new chapter, you're gonna get like something between six to 10 objectives. So then I post them at the beginning of lecture because those are the things that you need to know when you are going to either um, read the chapter, let's go back to number one, when you need to like read the chapter, when you like use the textbook or when you either read the lecture notes or you watch the lecture, lecture videos. Good, so there are three different ways you can get the content uh, for the class. Um, so you have the textbook, which is on general information. I'm gonna add it here, so you have the textbook here also. Um, you can also read lecture notes. So I'm gonna open the lecture notes. This is what, if I was lecturing, what I would say in class. I broke it down based on like objectives. So it tells you what the objective is and it tells you like how to explain it. So you get this too. So if you don't feel like reading the chapter because you sort of understand from lecture, you can just read the lecture notes just to review. Uh, lecture notes are based on objectives and these are all the things you need to know. You need to keep in mind that the chapter will cover everything within that topic and not everything is what we want you to know, if that makes any sense. Like the book is written like general, it covers everything about acid and bases. The things you need to know for this class are the things that are gonna be on the lecture notes. Does that make sense? So you got the lecture notes there. And then I will also make some videos. Um, videos for the most part is these lectures, I'm gonna upload them there so you guys have them. And if I make any extra videos, like if people are having problems with one topic or another, and I get an email or something saying, hey, Manny, I don't understand X, Y, or Z, I will just make videos and post them there also. So basically for lecture, there is not really any assignments every week. You just, it's just your place to get all the information you need to know for the chapter. So then the assignments come into assessment. And that's actually why I moved here because I wanted to talk about um, homework and discussions. So every chap, every module will get something that is called homework problems. And that will be the first file. So if you click on this thing, it's gonna bring a bunch of problems. They are all broken down by objectives. So if you see, I organize everything by objectives. So hopefully that will help you understand like how, what things you need to know and try to make it a little bit consistent. When you're going through the quizzes, it's gonna be broken down, guess by what? Objectives. Then when you take the exam, it's gonna be broken down by objectives. So everything's gonna follow the same system. 
Does that make sense? So everything that is, that is an objective is going to be on the quiz. Everything that is an objective is going to be on the exam. If it's not an objective, don't waste your time studying because it's not going to be anywhere. Good? Okay. So these things have a bunch of problems. Yay! So much practice. So exciting. Okay. So you got all these problems. I need to figure out what this is now. Um, anyways. So you need to complete 30 problems to get full credit for the homework. So basically the idea is, I know, this is all terrible because it's a review. Some of them are not that bad. Um, so you complete 30 problems. How do you complete them? So you just put the answer next to them, print it out, whatever you want to do. You can print it out, do it by hand. You can complete it next to them. But the idea is that while you are reading or you are studying, you are just completing these assignments. Does that make sense? These are the things you need to know. This is your practice. Um, if you have any questions about how to solve problems, this one, I'm gonna go back. Discussion forums come handy. So the discussion forum is basically a place for you to post questions about the homework and then work with other people. You get points for both of them. So um, it's 10 points for the homework and five points for the participation in the discussion forum. But basically it's like the idea of like, you're doing problems, oh, I have no clue how to do this one. You post it there or that somebody else or I'll help you how to show you how to solve it, then you can just put that in your homework and then you can complete it. Does that make sense? So that's how the two assignments work. After you do your homework problems um, and you finish and you submit it, then you can use all those resources to take your quiz. Good? So, the first file is going to be your homework problems. Then when you're, while you're working through that, if you have questions, you can post them on the discussion forum. Um, for the discussion forum, you can also like answer other people's questions and you get points, or you can post resources and you can also get points. And you can use the discussion forum for labs, but we'll talk about that later when we talk about labs. Good. So then you complete the problems, you submit them to the Dropbox, and then you take your quest. Good. Each quiz has 15 questions. This first quiz is going to have 20 questions. Um, but five questions are extra credit. So it's only out of 15 points. Then after that, the quizzes won't have extra credit. It will just be 15 questions. Good? So that makes sense? <laughs> so we talk about lecture. Then the last thing that we have to talk about will be lab. So for the labs, um, you get the lab manual. Um, so you open the lab manual, you read whatever lab we are doing. In this one, we are doing solution prep. Um, you, got, you got a lab kit. So the lab kit have, has all the equipment you need, but you have to purchase a few things. I'm working on the labs, trying to make it cheaper. I think right now to complete all the labs, you have to spend maybe about 20 bucks for all the different chemicals you have to use throughout the semester. Um, and that is if you have to buy everything from scratch, like if you're working at home, like some of the things are like sugar and things like that. So you most likely have them at home, so you don't really have to buy them. Um, if for some reason you're looking for something and you went to the store and you couldn't find it, just let me know, because I have like backup ideas of other things you could use. So instead of trying to go crazy and trying to find something, just let me know. We can just like come up with something else to get the lab to work. Does that make sense? So for the labs, you complete the lab, then you, lab, you write a lab report. Um, there's a template on lab reports somewhere. Lab manual, let me open it. Um, yeah, so this is like the list of the chemicals that you need for the whole semester. It's about 23, but I'm actually going to get rid of this one, so it's going to go down to 20, so. Because <laughs> it's going to be really hard to find alcohol nowadays, so I'm going to try to use something different. So that's going to make it actually a bit cheaper. So it's going to be less than 20 bucks for the, all, all the labs. So if you go through the thing, it has a laboratory report rubric. So these are all the different items that you need to have. I will complete the first lab 
and I will write a lab report. I'm gonna post it. So by the time you guys have to do the first lab, you guys will have, will have an example of how the lab report should look like. Good? So when you go to the labs, they just have like the procedure, they have blanks for you to answer questions and so on. Nothing super terrible. All right, so. That is about how the class is structured. So. Going back to here, we talk about attendance a little bit. Um, we talk about the discussion forums and we talk about the homework and we talk about the quizzes. Anybody, anybody okay with all these things? Yeah, so every module, and it's not every week. So there's only 10 chapters and we have 15 weeks. So there's some weeks when you don't have a quiz due or you don't have a homework due. The quizzes and the homeworks um, and the discussions, they're all due the same day. Don't wait to the night before to actually do them. It's like about 30 questions. So I think more than just like an hour at night to get all these problems done. So work with through them like throughout the week. They are all do the same day because I feel like you might be like trying to get the last few problems done before you take the quiz and so on. So I don't want to have like homework due Tuesday and quiz due Friday because what are you doing between the two days? So everything is due on Fridays. Not every Friday you have something. As I said, like there's only 10 chapters out of 15 weeks. Um, so then we're gonna got we're gonna take three exams, so a hundred points each. So the way that works is you're gonna complete three modules, then you get the first exam. Then you complete three more modules, you get exam two. Three more, you get exam three. Then you complete an extra module, and then you take the final. Does that make sense? So every three modules, you take an exam. As you can see, I try to make everything super consistent, like. I need to be able to remember all these things. So the way to make it, like, allow me to remember is just by doing everything the same. Good? Three chapters, one quiz. Or three modules, one quiz. Uh, one exam. So we take exams, then at the end you take the final exam. Um, for laboratories, we have 11 laboratories. One of them is dropped. Those are the points. And at some point, we are gonna work with a special project, but I'm gonna sort of not talk about it right now. Uh, it's about 70 points total. So basically you're gonna have a topic, you're gonna do some sort of experiment at home, you're gonna work in groups, and you're gonna present it. Does that make sense? So really simple that way. Um, there's a bunch of other things on the, on, on, the, on the syllabus. Some of them are like the schedule. Um, so for the schedule you'll see most of the things are due like Friday. So Friday, 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 and then exam, then quiz, homework Friday. Then this week, we start working with a special project. So we'll spend time talking about a special project this week. Then more quizzes, exams. So great stuff. All, all of these things are super fun things to do, especially taking quizzes. They are just great. Okay, so. So that's basically about how the class is gonna be structured. Um, one thing that is really important to notice, and I'm gonna scroll up to find it, um, is about lab. Actually, I don't know where it is. Anyways, so for labs, as a requirement to complete a lab-based class, you have a certain number of hours that you had to complete like in the lab setting. So you had to complete nine out of the 11 labs to be able to pass the class. Even if you complete it by just like submitting a lab report saying, I did it, and get like a zero on the lab report, you have to submit nine labs to pass the class. Does that make sense? So that's one requirement. Like you, you might be getting a super high grade in the class, you have to complete nine labs to pass. Uh, or submit nine lab reports to pass. Um, something about the labs, is you're gonna be completing basically every single lab at home. How many of you are chemists? I'm assuming none of you are chemists, right? You're taking general chemistry, so <laughs> there's no way you can become a chemist without even taking the 
first level chemistry class. So I do not expect any of you to be great in the lab and like going to the lab and be like, oh my God, all these labs work. Most of the labs will work. Some labs are just not gonna work and you're gonna talk to other people and, and they're gonna be like, yeah, that was easy. And you'll be like, oh my God, why can't I get this to work? At the end of the day, let me scroll down here to make a point. Okay. The lab points come from headings, introduction, relevant equations, whatever, lab journal procedure, observations, calculations, answer to the question, conclusions. How many points are based on accuracy? How many points are in, I got the results that I was supposed to get? Zero. You got terrible results, answer the question with the terrible results. You got terrible results, do the calculation with the terrible results. Write how, write how terrible your results were in your observations and you get all those points. It's not about getting the right answer. It's about going through the process of like experiencing and trying those topics or trying those labs. Does that make sense? If it doesn't work and you spend like two hours on the lab, that's it. I want you to spend two hours like doing hands on things. Then don't spend the whole night trying to get it to work. I'm assuming you have better things to do than troubleshoot a lab, troubleshoot a lab over the weekend. You guys agree? Yeah, so don't freak out about it. You won't fail the class because it didn't work. You will fail the lab if you do not submit the lab report because then you get a zero. Just do what you did, write down what you did, and just write down why you think it didn't work. And that's good enough. Like you get a good grade because you'll complete most of the assignments. Does that make sense? Good? Great. Are these due on Friday as well? What? Are these due on Friday as well? Yes. Yeah. So there's a bunch of, like, basically everything's due on Friday. And the reason why I do that is so you can create your routine for the week. A bunch of people, what they do is, like, they do laps over the weekend because you have more time and just get it done. And then during the week, they only do lecture and they do quizzes. But that might work for some people who works during the week, but that might not work for you if you are actually like work in a place where like you actually have to spend most of your work hours over the weekend. So the idea is like you can somewhat create your own schedule of like what works for you. Does that make sense? So that's what so that's a really good point. And that's something I would do. I'll just like look at the assignments and figure out what works for you best, like weekly, like make sort of like a weekly schedule. The everything is due Friday, so it doesn't really matter like what days you pick, but I would try to find something that works for you. So, See if this works. So I put a poll there. This is my way of sort of like keeping track of who's, who's here and who's not. Um, see if you guys have any questions about any of this. So I saw somebody, I see somebody has a question. You can talk and ask the question or you can post the question on the discussion chat and then I'll, I'll answer it. Um, could you go through the homework expectations again? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Missing one person. I guess I can ask, ask that question later. But whoever is not, has an answer, then you lose attendance points. No cool. 
because you're already here. You already woke up at eight in the morning on a morning on a Monday, so might as well get points for it. All right. So let's go. Okay, so let's say um, I'm working on module one. So for homework problems, basically the total number of points for homework is going to be 15. So you get 10 points for your homework submission and five points for your participation in the discussion forum. So to do homework problems, first thing I'll do is I will download this. And my camera is on my way. So, sorry, you guys have to see my shirt. <laughs> and you guys get the file. Do you guys see the homework file now? Okay, so you got the homework file. So basically, the first one is just write the reaction. So we just like, oh, this thing, nitrogen. And you can do this like by hand, you can do it in the computer, whatever you think works best for, best for you. So I'm like, oh, okay, this looks good. I know I need at least Two of these guys, and I also need two of these guys. And to make it fancy, I would just like do my sub, my substrates, and like bam, one A check. This good. And you keep doing that. Um, you can do it by hand, and you can take like photos of your work and just put the photos there. Does that make sense? You can go to like insert and just insert a picture and connect your phone to the computer and put photos if you don't want to work directly on the Word document. So hopefully uh, either of the two works. Um, so you keep doing that and you need to complete 30 problems out of all of them. They're like, oh, this should be like 20. I'm not doing that. Then don't do that. <laughs> just keep it. Does that make sense? Then do the ones that don't have like A through P <laughs> on the problem. Um, so you just complete the problems. Um, this one's like, I have a bunch of letters. They're not super terrible. They just like, ways and answer or base. You just need to write whether they're acid or bases. And you can answer them however you want. Like, I'm gonna say, this is just me brainstorming. Acid equals blue. So that's what I want to do. It's so like, oh, acids are blue. So this is an acid. So you can just start doing things like that. Does that make sense? You can also just go next to it and be like, acid. Like whatever you want to do, whatever makes the most sense to you is my money. Um, so you complete 30 problems. Let's say I get, well, these are terrible. I guess never mind. This is the oscillation number. So you're just writing a number next to them. So the oxidation number of, in this case, chlorine is plus one. And you just complete the problems. Anyways, let's say I'm like, oh, IF7. I have no clue what IF7 is. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna go to the discussion forum and be like, new thread, help. I wouldn't really pull help because that's not, like, not really specific, but um, I would just put an example like uh, homework pro problem, and I forgot what the homework problem number was. Let me see, 16.
This pressure. I don't like when people are looking at me typing. I'm not the best at typing. See? And then this is a question, which means it yields me one point on, towards my discussion for, for, uh, forum problems. So then let's say one of you guys, Linda is next, the first one on top. So I'll be like, Linda is like, oh, I know. And she just goes to, after I post this, she goes and be like, hey, this is the answer to this because of that. And then she gets two points for answering the question. Does that make sense? So basically you complete 30 problems, and I'll give you 10 points. If you complete less than that, then you get whatever percent you completed of the 10 points. And just the participation on the discussion forum, uh, you can get up to five points. Does that make sense? If you don't have any questions about the homework, you can just answer other people's questions or you can just post resources. Be like, to find oxidation states, Here are the rules. <laughs> or something more like I lost what I was here. And then you get points for that. Does that make sense? So these are different ways to get the homework problem. So the idea is like, you get help from like your homework problems and like instead of just emailing me you guys can work with each other because the good thing about that is i'm one person so it's gonna take me some time to go over everybody's email um but if you put it there other people can also help you so make the feedback uh, faster and this is really helpful especially when you guys work at night i have a one year old that doesn't let me sleep and i haven't slept eight hours in like a year so I go to bed like at 8.30 <laughs> because I know I will have to wake up at 3 or 2 in the morning when he decides that he wants to play. So if you're working like at 9 or at 10, there's a chance I'll be awake because maybe he's awake, but there's a chance I'm trying to sleep so then other people can help you like answer your questions. Does that make sense? So hopefully this like, discussion forum will uh, be able to help you like get feedback, especially at night. Good? Good, any other questions? Oh, no problem. Any other questions about the class, how it's set up or anything like that? Okay, so. What we're going to do now is I'm gonna give you a 10 minute break and then we're gonna meet back at 8.50. That works? Give you a break, get some coffee, walk around, stretch. And we're gonna talk, uh, talk about a little bit about what is on this first week quiz. Like we actually know this week, but it's next week. Good, but it's a bunch of things from Game 101. I don't want to try to cramp everything next week. Good? So see you in 10. Actually, A51. I'm happy that nobody's super confused about the class. I think that's, that's a good sign. Hopefully, all the organization makes sense for you guys and you guys understand how to follow this.
Um, so what I want you to, what I want to do now is I'm going to have you guys go into breakout sessions and what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to go to Cobra and you guys are going to first talk to each other and get to know each other's names and what's not. And second is you guys are going to go to module one and you guys are going to download the study guides. So let me write on the chat. Cobra module one study guides. And you guys are going to talk about identify, you guys basically are going to identify the topics that will be the most um, problematic. Does that make sense? So you guys have a look at what you guys need to learn for the first quiz, not the syllabus quiz, but the first quiz, and talk about which ones are gonna be the easiest ones or which ones are gonna be the worst ones.
I'm waiting for the other group to come in. I think we only have one group here. Maybe. You guys all doing okay? So out of all those topics, which ones do you guys think are gonna be the hardest ones? All of those? Oh my God, that's so much work. I'm being sarcastic because nobody said anything. I think equilibrium for me. Equilibrium? Mm -hmm. I guess I think that's gonna be a big problem for almost everybody who took the class in spring. I was talking to Daryl about this, like how last semester we tried to move online and then Cobra crashed and they were like, whatever, just learn whatever. <laughs> I'm tired. It's the end of the semester. I'm burnt out. <laughs> just do whatever. <laughs> so, so equilibrium, you guys think it's going to be the worst one? Definitely for me, because that was, that happened in spring. Okay. So it's good to know. So, um, let me do something. Yeah. So talking is good because if I know things about you guys and I know what you guys struggle and you guys are doing good, I can help you. If you guys don't talk to me, then I don't know. So let me look at equilibrium. So the hardest part about equilibrium is actually using equilibrium constants. Like finding the concentration of chemicals at equilibrium. So for the equilibrium chapter, um, write the equilibrium constant KP and KC, that's fairly simple. Um, calculate the equilibrium constant for grids free energy, that's fine. Predict the effects of stress, that's fine. So for quiz number one, I'm gonna remove D from the objectives. So I'm gonna push D to the next quiz, because that's, that's easy. Does that make sense? So that will decrease what you guys need to know about that chapter. Okay, so let me do something else. Let's talk a little bit about equilibrium. So equilibrium, the first thing you need to know You can see my board. Okay, so there's A, B, and C. You're gonna move D to the, ne the next chapter. That makes sense? Because even though there's three, there's also all these other things that you guys need to review. So understand there's a bunch of things to do. So the first thing you need to know is you need to be able to write equilibrium constants. So that's objective A. So just to get a, sort of like a parenthesis, so equilibrium is basically some reactions go 100%, which means that A is going to be 100%. So at the end of the reaction, you have no A and you form B and you only have B. This happens to some reactions, but some of the reactions, A is start forming B and then at some point, B gets sort of full, so then you start pushing back to become A. So like, you never get rid of A completely. You ended up having like a balance between A's and B's. Does that make sense? So not everything reacts. And that's what we call equilibrium. So normally, so A is start forming B, B then slowly start forming A, and at some point, the two things happen at the same speed. So when A 
um, we're going to put the rate of A, we're going to put breaking equals then the, what I, the rate of B, when I put breaking also. So basically, the reaction forward equals the reaction in reverse. So the two reactions are happening at, happening at the same space, at the same pace. I'm not going to ask you a bunch of questions about definition, so you don't have to worry too much about definition. I just want you to guys to get the idea of what's happening at equilibrium. So the A is going to form B, and then at some point, there's no more space for B to be formed, so then B start breaking back to A, and then the two reactions is going sort of like in a circle. Like an A becomes a B, and while the A becomes a B, the B goes back and becomes an A. So that's what we say, the reaction reach equilibrium. So then you normally end up having reactions where you get like A plus B forms like C plus D. And then we show that error like that. So back and forth, showing that that is in at equilibrium. So you will see that sometimes I use this type of arrow when I'm talking about reactions that actually go one way. So A goes to B period. B never goes back to A. But then when the reaction can go both ways, then you'll see I use the double arrow. And that just implies this, this reaction goes in, in equilibrium, which right now won't really matter a lot. It will make a lot of sense, the arrow dif difference when we talk about acid and bases. Because you will see that strong acids or strong species go one way, so I always do one arrow. And then weak species go both ways. They reach equilibrium, so they go to two arrows. And so the calculations are going to be slightly different based on what they are and how the equilibrium works. So the arrows will actually make a little bit of sense. Anyways, so the first thing we wanted to talk about is about equilibrium constants. So I'm gonna pick just, uh, let's say we got H2O, just a random reaction, say it's liquid, plus CO2 gas, goes to equilibrium and forms carbonic acid. Good? So we got reactions like this. We know this reaction is at equilibrium which means that if you have CO2 and you have water, it will form carbonic acid, but it won't, that reaction will happen 100%. At some point, when you have too much carbonic acid, then the carbonic acid will start breaking down back to form more water and CO2. You reach that equilibrium stage. So we got that reaction in equilibrium. Um, when they reach equilibrium, we say that they have an equilibrium constant And the equilibrium constant represents the ratio between products and reactants. So it's normally products over reactants. That equilibrium constant, we call it K. So this will be the constant, which is the equilibrium constant. Good. So the equilibrium constant, when the reaction reaches equilibrium, the ratio of the pros of the reactant becomes a constant value. That's what the equilibrium constant is. So even though you're forming more A and you're forming more B, the ratio of the two is going to be the same because every time you form one A, then you also form one B because they keep pushing each other back and forth. 
Does that make sense? So it doesn't really matter what the numbers are, that ratio between the two is gonna be the same. Two to one, three to one, whatever that is. Okay, so for this reaction that we have here, the K is going to be the product, which in this case is H2CO3 over the reactant, which in this case is H2O and CO2. Good? So, the equilibrium is based on, actually, let me check this, is based on changes in concentration or pressure. And the key here is about changes. So the equilibrium is based on the exchange in concentration or pressure. So AQ solutions have concentration values, right? So they have, you can say, they are like molar concentrations and they can change. If you have more moles, it gets higher. If you got less moles, it, you got lower. Um, gases, they normally have pressure, which normally measuring ATM. And if you have more moles of gases, you get higher pressure. If you have less moles of gases, you have less pressure. Does that make sense? Liquids don't have concentration because a liquid is just a liquid. There is nothing dissolving something else. So liquids, actually their concentration is normally their density. But density doesn't change. So since density doesn't change, it doesn't follow like it's a base on changes because densities don't change. So when you're writing the equilibrium constants, you do not include liquids. Because liquids do not change in concentration or pressure because they don't know gases so they don't have any pressure changes. Good? The same thing happened with solids. Solids is just a chunk of material at the bottom. And the concentration is also based on the density. Is how much, how many moles you have in an area, but the area is just the amount of space that the solid gets, the solid takes. So it doesn't change either. So when you are writing equilibrium constants, and this is basically what you need to know, solids and liquids are not included. Good? Okay, so basically, going back to like this thing, that reaction, so, if I have a reaction that is H2O liquid and CO2 gas going to H2CO3 aqueous, my equilibrium constant will be the H2CO3 divided by CO2. Because water is a liquid, so we don't include it. However, if we were working on a different type of physical state, so let's say I wrote the reaction as like, you got steam, so this water gas, and CO2 gas going and forming CO3, sorry, 
H2CO3 aqueous. Then here, since now our water is not liquid, then we can say that this equilibrium constant for this specific reaction is H2O times CO2. Now this is gas, so we actually keep it. Good? That's all bringing good memories of all equilibrium things you guys learned. Okay. So another example. <sighs> Let me think of a reaction. Um, I just not made something up. So let's say you have two A gas plus three B gas forming four C gas and D solid. Just easier to use later than actually thinking of a reaction that has those coefficients. So time to take, take the easy route. So we have this problem. So we have this reaction and we're gonna write I'm going to say normally right the equilibrium constant. I'm also going to say expression. Although sometimes I might say equation. But most of the time I will actually say expression than actually an equation, but it's not a real equation. So, anyways, so let's say the question is to write the equilibrium constant for that reaction. So then I know that the equilibrium constant is K and that will be pros over reactants. So I got my pros, so I have C. I'm gonna put D here, even though I know it shouldn't be there. Then I'm gonna put B and I'm gonna put A, good? So looking at this, I know this is a solid, so I should not include that. So I'm gonna make a random color, okay. Yeah, go away, good? So, and so far we are okay. So we know that we have pros over reactants. Something else that we need to know about equilibrium constants is that the coefficients equal the exponents. So on the, in the first two problems I did, all the coefficients are just ones. So we got a one here, and we got a one here, we got a one here, and a one here, and a one there. So I didn't have to worry about using exponents because they were all ones. In this case, A is a, has a coefficient of two, which means that's gonna be A squared. B has a coefficient of three, so it will be cubed. And then C is gonna be to the fourth power because it has a coefficient of four. So my actual, equilibrium expression will actually be that. And I'm going to erase this to make it less confusing. Good. Okay. So, so far we are almost done with our objective. So you, as you can see, it's not super bad. Um, okay, so we got that. The second part of that objective, it was write the equilibrium constants and the objective say KC or KP. So what is the difference between KC versus KP? KC, that C, means concentration. The P means pressure. Good. So normally, if you have aqueous solutions, you use a KC. If you have gases, you use KP. So I will say, in general, 
use KC or you call the K, you call the K. Use it, cross that, I'm gonna say call. K, KC, unless all chemicals in the equilibrium constant expression are gases. So looking back to this problem here, A is a gas, B is a gas, C is a gas. So all the compounds in this equilibrium expression are gases, so we call this Kp. I'm gonna scroll down, but I scroll back to what I had before. So I start labeling my compounds. So for this one here, I got a gas and I have an aqueous. So not all my compounds are gases, so it's a Kc. I look here to this one, I have gas, I have gas, but I have aqueous, which means Kc. You only use Kp when all your compounds are gases. Good? There is a reason behind it. I want to tell you, but you don't really have to know. Um, Kp means that everything in the K is in ATM terms. That's what it means. So if you have everything in gases, then you just put like the pressure of C, the pressure of B, and the pressure of A, and then you just solve for K in terms of ATM or pressure. If you have at least one AQ solution, then you need to put everything in terms of molar concentration. Does that make sense? Which means that KCs are basically all molar concentrations and KPs are all ATM uh, values. Good? So for the example, like, and we did this already, for, for the example of like um, H2O gas and CO2 gas going to h to CO3, this is easy to be molar because it's aqueous, right? So how many moles of this compound you have in volume? These ones initially will be ATMs, but to write the equilibrium constant, we will end up having to write a KC, which means like these two, this one and that one has to be changed from that to molar, good? Do you guys know how to change ATM to molar? I don't remember. With PV equals NRT, because molar is moles over liter, which is basically N over V. So then you can say that P divided by RT equals N over B. So you take that at whatever that pressure was and divide it by the R and the T, where R is 0 0.08206 ATMs times liter divided by mole times K. And then T is the temperature in Kelvin because you have to cancel that okay. K. So it'll be like, if you have a reaction where you have like AQs and gases. You can always change gases to molar, but you cannot change AQs to ATMs, because like there is no pressure with something that is AQs. 
So that's why if you have at least one thing that is aqueous, you have to make a Kc. But if you have all gases, you can just calculate the Kp, which is keeping everything in terms of gases. So, how is that? <laughs> Isn't it chemistry fun? You guys miss chemistry. Look like at everything you guys are learning already. Okay. So, one more thing. So, to finish equilibrium, because you guys said that was the hardest one. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just go over equilibrium. Then on Wednesday, we'll go over all the things. Good? But equilibrium, since you guys say it's the hardest one, I just want to give you more time to think about these things and the things you guys need to know. Uh, so, for calculating the equilibrium constant, uh, So calculating equilibrium constant from Gibbs free energy. I'm not going to review calculating Gibbs free energy because whenever we do like thermodynamics, we can talk about that. But you guys need to remember that you have delta G equals delta H minus D delta S. And one of the ways to calculate Gibbs free energy. And you also have this equation that is really ugly, but it's actually not bad, which is some or the delta G is of formation of the products minus the sum of the delta G is of formation of the reactants. All them times some exponent. That looks terrible, but that's fine. Because we'll talk about thermodynamics a different day. But there are some equations that you can use to find a delta G value. So that's, I give it to you. Those are the easiest ones. Just, this is delta G, find it. So, but anyways, if you have, the delta G or the reaction, then you can use this equation, which is delta G equals negative RT natural log of K, where this is the delta G standard. So we got delta G, R, and this is like when things get super fun. So R is this number when we are working with gases, but R is 8.31447 joules per mole times K. So if you wanna change ATMs and liters to joules, then there's a conversion and it becomes that. So when you're working with energy, the R value has a different number than when you're working with gases, good? So make sure that your units match. Like we're working PV, you're working with pressure. So you need the one that has ATMs. If you're working with delta G, you're working with joules, so you need the one with joules. Good. T is temperature in kelvins. Ln is the natural log. And K is the equilibrium constant. So if you needed to find the delta G, the equilibrium constant of the reaction, and I give you some delta G, let's say the delta G of the reaction is negative 234 joules per mole. So we know the delta G, you need to make sure that the delta G is in joules. Most of the delta Gs you guys will see are in kilojoules. So you have to change the kilos to, G, to just joules. Does that make sense? 
Oh, so then you get the delta G, you can say that negative 234 joules per mole equals a negative 8.31447 times, let's say it's at room temperature, 298 kelvins times natural log of K. So then we can solve negative 234 divided by negative 8.31447 times 298 equals natural log of K. And then we actually need K. So you guys know how to get K? Take all of that and do E to that. Because that E will help you remove that natural log. So in this case, E to 234 divided by 8.31447 times 298 will equal your equilibrium constant K. Good? Yeah. Isn't the equilibrium the best? <laughs> no, acid and bases are the best. I was joke with acid and bases because the first exam is all acid and bases. So you guys are gonna learn how to like them and hate them. Yeah. Cause it's gonna be like fun, they're not too bad. And we start working on acid and bases and the first week is fine. The second week is okay. The third week is like, stop talking about them. Then the fifth week is like, please can you just move on to something else? <laughs> Anyways, so last, last thing. I keep saying last thing and I don't let you guys go. Sorry, but I wanted to finish the equilibrium. Um, is the one about adding stress to the system. Good? So that's what we call Le Chalier. So, basically it says that when you add a stress to the system, the system will adjust to minimize that stress. Good? All right. So I'm gonna put some generic reaction just because it's a lot easier to write and that will save me some time. So let's say A plus B forming C plus D to gas and aqueous and solid And it's the liquid. Good? So if you add A, that number will increase. So that will shift the equilibrium that way. So basically, you're adding too much A. So then the equilibrium will have to like buffer that reaction, buffer the system, so it adjusts for it. So you have too much A, so then I need the A to break down and form C and D. Does that make sense? The same will be too, true if I add too much B, then the reaction will shift. Let's say I say I remove A, then this number here, is really small. So now I'm making a hole where the A is supposed to be. So then my reaction would then shift to like fill that hole. So then if I remove A, the reaction will shift to the left. Does that make sense? And the same will be true if I remove B. So if I remove B, then the reaction will shift left. Does that make sense? Now we need to go back to the same principle that we did before. Here we have solids and liquids. 
if we change the solids or we change the liquids, that does nothing to the reaction. Because the solids and the liquids are not part of our equilibrium. Does it really matter if you add or you remove them? It doesn't change the concentrations. Good? So a change in C or change in D equals no change. Good? So something else that sometimes we do will be increase pressure. So let's say I increase pressure. Increasing pressure is basically the same as increasing concentration of gases. Good? So if I increase the concentration of the gas, in this case, I'll be increasing this guy. No, the, the rest of them are not gases. So I'll only be increasing A. If I increase A, that will shift to the right. And then decreasing pressure will be the same as decreasing the concentration of gases. So then that will shift left. Does that make sense? So we did changes in, con in concentration, we did changes in pressure. Um, instead of pressure, I can use volume. So like increase volume equals decrease pressure. And you can make all the connections that way. Does that make sense? And then the last thing, and this promise last thing, we only have three minutes anyway, so last thing. <laughs> um, let's say you have delta H of the reaction, and that is negative. That means it's exothermic, which means that energy is on your broad side. So if I increase temperature, I'm increasing energy. So it would shift backwards. So when you're working with um, temperature, you need to look at whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. If it's exo, like negative, then the energy is on the product side. If it's endo, then you got energy plus A forming B, something like that. So endo, the energy is on the reactant side. And then you treat energy as like you treat concentration or amount. And I'm going to stop sharing just to show that I'm not writing anymore. <laughs> Sorry about all that. Throw you a lot of things. Hopefully this was the one that you were the most concerned about. As you can see, it's not super terrible. There's a lot of things to review and what's not. So that those are the three objectives that you need to know. If you go to the chapter, just make sure that you focus on this and nothing else, because there's not gonna be anything else on that quest. Does that make sense? So make sure to use the objectives when you're studying, especially this chapter, so you know exactly what I want you to know. Everything else doesn't matter. Just there for all the classes. Good? <sighs> is the first homework due this Friday, is that correct? No. Next Friday. This week is all like module zero, which I'm not covering because it's reading the syllables and answering questions and what's not. But I don't want you guys to be like, oh, I'm going to do module zero this week and then module one next week because you're going to get hit by five chapters next week if you wait that long. So you need to like, do model zero today and tomorrow, <laughs> and then start reviewing the things that you don't know, and then review the things you do know. Does that make sense? Good? <sighs> and then did you say that D for equilibrium, like on the, the objectives, is going to be on the next the one after this? So I'm, what I'm going to tell you is ignore it completely. Or get out of it. Because 
we will use that in acid and bases. So we will move it to the next chapter, but you won't see it. Because it's going to feel like you are learning acid and bases. I just going to mix it in. I mean, like, this is how you are using acid and bases and move on and we will use it, but it's not going to be like, Equilibrium question. It's going to be an acid base question. Okay. So let's say we deleted it. Don't need to know. Good. Any other questions? You can survive. Yeah. Great. Only four more topics to go. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Thank you for waking up early. I'm Glad I got to see you guys. I'm not being so lonely in this room by myself. Now I feel a little bit more social. So thank you. You guys were super nice. So hopefully this all work out well. Good. Enjoy the rest of the day. Don't do too much chemistry. Or do whatever you want. <laughs> see you guys. Thank you. Bye.